Hi everyone, this is Trevor from AstroBackyard.com. I'm here in my unheated, uninsulated garage. It's about minus two in here right now. It's a chilly Canadian winter night, and uh, I'm going to be lugging this uh, telescope rig outside for some astrophotography. Uh, tonight's imaging choice is the Orion Nebula and the Running Man Nebula. They, uh, fit, they both fit nicely within the field of view in my 102 millimeter Explore Scientific Refractor. So this, this is my next project after moving on from the Horsehead Nebula that uh, I was working on back in December. Not to say that that project's done, but uh, I'm moving on to Orion for now. We only get so many clear nights in the winter and I want to take advantage. I've recently partnered with Ontario Telescope and Accessories. Uh, that's ontariotelescope.com. And uh, that's pretty exciting news for uh, a small channel like this if you've been following from the beginning, like guys like Sir Daniel that have been here since day one. Uh, and uh, the really cool thing about that is he's going to be sending me astrophotography products to review and use here in the backyard. And then uh, hopefully watching me use it, you can decide if you want to make that purchase or not. Uh, and the first item uh, he's sent me um, is a Batonoff mask. And uh, it's a small little focusing tool uh, that installs onto the front of your telescope objective. And it's got these little rubber stoppers here used to adjust it uh, to size. So this one was good for refractors um, 90 to 105 millimeters. Mine being 102, this was the right size. So you just uh, basically clip it onto the front of your objective and then the idea behind this is uh, with your DSLR camera attached um, using either live view on the camera or in my case backyard EOS the uh, live view function there um, you'll point this towards uh, a bright star and then these lines on the, on the uh, mask will create uh, star diffraction spikes and then simply it's it's a matter of lining up the center spike between the star and when you've done that uh, you'll know that you have tack, tack sharp focus so as you uh, rotate the focus wheel you'll see the uh, center spike going in and out of the center uh, so you want to get a dead center so uh, pretty cool and uh, I can't wait to use this tonight and we'll see if we can get uh, the best focus yet on uh, Orion So I'm just getting all set up here. I, uh, I'm all aligned and uh, calibrated. So I'm going to go ahead and connect to my Canon T3i and Backyard EOS. It's going to fail because I'm not connected to the camera. I'm going to plug that in. There we go. Okay, I'm going to show you how to use this batten off mask here. We're going to go to the frame and focus tab. And it's going to give me a live view through the scope. So that's Beetlejuice right there. Nice bright star. So I'm going to go ahead and put this mask on. And I'm just adjusting the focus here. Okay, there you can see Beetlejuice there. And uh, so you can see it's out there, full width half maximum, but uh, number figure goes up. And as I'm getting tighter and tighter, you can start to see those diffraction spikes. So I'm going to get real tight, and then I'm going to take a test frame. I'm going to snap a one, we'll do a two second exposure at ISO 1600. And we'll see the preview come up, and there we go. Okay, so we're only a little bit out. You can see that there. That center star spike 
uh, needs to be centered between the two. So this one here needs to move up just slightly so it's evenly centered between the X. So I'm going to adjust focus slightly using the fine focuser knob and take another test image. Let's see if that was any better. Oh, uh, other way. Okay, one final adjustment and that'll be it. That's gonna be the one. And then after this, I'm gonna lock the focus. Okay, there we go, that, that was perfect. We're gonna lock on. So here, just looking at the mask here, this is what it looks like on the objective. Creating the uh, diffraction spikes on a bright star, which happened to be uh, Betelgeuse in this case. And we were able to uh, achieve perfect focus. And I've gone ahead and locked the position uh, on my focuser draw tube. And now I know I've got perfect focus for the rest of the night. Sorry if that was a little rough guys, it's minus 18 out here with the wind chill, so uh, I'm just going to go ahead and get up and running on uh, Orion and then I will check back with you in a minute. Okay, I've got uh, PHD2 guiding uh, up and running and uh, of course now that I'm up and running I do see a few clouds passing by. It's okay, this is just a bonus night anyway. It's uh, almost first quarter moon, starts tomorrow. Uh, I'm just so desperate to get out. Uh, I'm taking 10 second subs on Orion just to get some good uh, core detail and I'll take hundreds of those uh, just to uh, get something accomplished. Anyways, I just wanted to talk about that batten off mask, that my first experience uh, focusing with it. And uh, I'm not convinced that uh, refractor owners, uh, specifically wide field refractors like uh, mine, it's about 700 millimeter, uh, I don't know if you, if you really require a batten off mask to reach uh, super sharp focus. Uh, I really think you can get the job done just as well in backyard EOS using the full width half maximum. That's that number, that, uh, that figure they associate with the star and the uh, diameter of it. Uh, so my existing method for focus I think was pretty solid. And uh, I really think the, the batten off masks are, are more suited for larger uh, Newtonian reflectors. I could see how you could use live view uh, in real time to see those star spikes and make focus adjustments there uh, rather than going back and forth and taking test exposures uh, like I had to do. The image was just too dim in my scope to, to do it through live view and for me that was a bit of a deal breaker. But I mean the batten off mask is just another tool you can use and they're inexpensive so if, if you do need some help focusing I would suggest picking one up trying it out and uh, otherwise yeah, keep using full width half maximum. Just my two cents. One of my favorite additions to the Astro Backyard Garage is my new beer fridge. What a beauty. Beer's out in the garage as I can hear Rudy losing his mind in the house. I'm gonna check on him, but uh, I think I'll grab a beer first. You just want to be in the video too, don't you, Rudy? Yeah. I think he heard me talking the playback in the camera and thought that was someone else in here. Who knows, it's garbage night. He could be barking at people putting up their garbage. So here's the situation now. The, uh, the clear sky chart said that it was uh, bad seeing tonight and bad transparency. Just the wispy, thin clouds that are in and out. So uh, I'm jumping back and forth when, uh, when a cloud patch does go by the Orion Nebula, I start taking 10 second darks. When there's a clear stretch on the way, take the lens cap off, start shooting 10 second lights again. And uh, I'll take you over to the computer to show you what those 10 second lights look like.
So it's just getting those core details. You can see I've got, uh, I'm on 11 of 20 now. So basically these will be blended into my longer exposure uh, stack for Orion and we'll get that uh, high dynamic range everyone loves so much in this uh, deep sky object. It is freezing out here. The temperature dropped and the uh, skies cleared. I had to do a meridian flip on the mount. Orion passed over. So uh, I'm just running PhD again, getting that uh, calibrated. And then I'll be shooting three minute subs at ISO 800 on Orion. And I'm gonna try, try to uh, scrap together an image by the end of this video. It's gonna contain some data from that I shot earlier in January. It's gonna uh, include some HA data uh, all in all for about, I'm guessing around three hours, but I'll, I'll post the full details along with the photo. Anyways, uh, I hope you guys are getting out this winter. If you're up in the north with me, stick it out. Uh, the hands will be numb, but it's worth it. And thank you to the 4,000 subscribers to the Astro Backyard channel. I absolutely love this stuff and I love connecting with you guys. So uh, thanks everyone for watching and uh, clear skies.